leave my Bible right now? Um, not right now. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to come together and speak about you. Help us to hear your voice, help us know your way. And may we learn to love you more and more each day. We entrust this time to the hands of our mother as we say, Hail Mary. Oh, Holy Christ, Christ, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So I was hoping for some more people who would you know, do some more voting, but it looks like you'll be the one to make the decision. <laughs> <laughs> you to take this one yourself. So a couple of ideas I have. Um, so for today, I, I brought just one uh, kind of thing I put together on creation of the fall. Uh -huh. uh, creation of the fall, the Garden of Eden. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I'll pass that in a minute. But I don't want to pass it on now because they will be focused on those rather than yeah. what we're doing later. I know people. <laughs> They're really hearing ahead, ignoring me. Um, so I'll do that for today. I said there's a couple of really key points that I think is important for all kinds of things in theology. Um, but for the next, till the summer, mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of ideas I had, and something you prefer, let me know. But idea one I had was that it should be something that's easily accessible to people, it should be something that you haven't done before, something that we can do. We did finish the other one that Steve brought already. We, we finished that. Um, so I was thinking perhaps looking at Humanity Vitae. This is Paul the Sixth. Uh, booklets from a couple of years ago, don't we? That you had. Yes, but I don't think I have any left more here. So I don't know if I know who I have. But they're online for free. It's If you have booklets, I know I did pass out a book at some point. Um, but I don't matter if it doesn't have this anymore. But they are easy about uh, it. Says it's online and everything else. Uh, so this is the encyclical book by, by Paul VI on contraception of marriage, 1968. Um, it also put the one of the doctors of Vatican II. We'll go through it again, as well, the same way. Um, I was thinking either God in the Spes on the human nature or Sacramento of Chilean A, which is the, um, the document on liturgy. Um, but there are 16 of them. Can you pick one? From there. <laughs> oh, goodness. Let's <laughs> okay. uh, we'll start with one. We don't want to go in the world. We'll start with one. Just like dive into it. Um, that's the resources. And... What more information do you ever want to know? But that's one possibility. Uh, the, the third possibility would be going through kind of a captain. So taking the lesson I have today, and we'll, we'll go from there and keep going on the same stuff as we're going through the, the catechism of it. Um, we could also look at some of the encyclical the writings of John Paul II. I thought very how the would be good, uh, which is on truth um, and objective morality. That's something we need to look at these days. There's objective truth and it doesn't shake and depending on other plants and stuff. And this is his drop of the seconds. The drop of the seconds is very, very dense. He writes, he, he's very complicated. And he writes, he writes very, very long and very, very complex. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's worth looking at. Um, or something, so there's that. Um, yeah. There's other things too that are, these are all easily accessible. So I was thinking of one of these. Do any of these sound good to you? Do any of these sound appealing? Do none of them sound appealing? Um, you know, you being the ones who are here, you could be the ones who vote on that. Um, if you're gonna wait and see what, you know, some of you have done this before with me, I think. Um, the catechism stuff that put together. Um, some of you have already done it, some of you have. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, if this is appealing to you, great, doing it. If it's something else, great. Uh, these are, are my thoughts. And any opinions, thoughts, just other ideas you'd like to look at instead? Um, <laughs> 
Hi. She. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> well, when um, we were originally talking about the adult education class and we yeah. thought about the New Testament and Matthew, when we decided that the other two that we had suggested at that time, somebody had, I don't remember who, yeah. were the Latin Mass or Lives of the Saints. And we could do that. We could do church history. We could do Gospel of Luke. <laughs> yeah. We could do... We could do anything right. you want to. Um, but I guess this, my question is, what would be helpful to you guys? Um, and again, I think it, I was thinking, you know, maybe go through, through some some of the books of Bank Sixteen, but those aren't easily available. Mm. You know, some, you know, his his Life of Cross, great book, mm. but you know, not everyone has access to it. Okay. Um, I don't know if everyone's the best in getting a book. <laughs> maybe you do. Um, but see, I'm going to have to have any of those ideas. I'm going to have to go on these, move back to the scripture. I'm going to have to go on one of these. I'm going to have to be living. Um, you, you, the mother six of you, you're the ones going to decide this. <laughs> so give me some feedback, though. <laughs> the number four way to talk these sounded interesting. Okay. Is that or my name? This one is by John Paul II. So oh, this is a second call okay. on, uh, on truth, the splendor of truth. So this is, this, the, the main thrust of it is there's an objective truth to silence. Um, it's, it's, it's closed to morality and, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's a response basically to certain currents that were around in the day and still around, unfortunately. Uh, this that morality changes depending on the circumstance, situation. Is there always, we, we say that there are truly things that are always everywhere wrong no matter what. And people would say, well, not always wrong. There's always circumstances. And I'll pull the second one for that one, but this is it. You say he's very complex. He is very complex. He is, he is very dense. He, not dense as a stupid, dense as a yeah, I, act. It's yeah. a good one to pick because if we cool. read it by ourselves, we were probably gonna ask yes, us yeah, through yeah, it all. Yeah, I like, agree. And if you're explaining it to us, then uh, that might be. All right, yeah. so John, John, we will plan on John Paul II's very tough splendor. What is everybody else going to think when they show up? <laughs> I will well, tell they should show up. Yeah. 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 What are you talking about? Okay, thank you, Father, for the suggestions. Thank you. Yeah. So then for today, we're going to go through. You had it already. <laughs> we're going to go through a little lesson. Yes, some of you already looked at this before okay. with me. Um, the creation of man, the Garden of Eden, the fall. So there's some things that are really very important to so many things. Yeah. The, the creation story and the, the fall. When it comes to looking at the human person, there are a number of great truths we have to have three main truths we have to know, understand who we are, what we are, what we're doing here. And that's we're created by God out of love. We're fallen. So you'll see there's marks on us, there's effects on us, original sin. Sin is easy to do. The right thing is hard to do. We're, we're fallen creatures. It's hard to know the right thing. When you do know it, it's hard to do. It'd be nice that weren't the case. But we were also redeemed. And we were redeemed by Jesus Christ, God to come back. These are the three main truths that means to be human being. The great things. When God created us, out of love, He made us in a unique way, made us in His image and likeness. Sometimes when we hear this phrase, we think that these two words are simply repetitive, you know, say they the same thing, but they are not. What's the difference? Um, it's 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 more than just 
um, really bad at explaining things. It's more than just a reflection. Okay. Um, so, in image, is there, is there a cinema that wants deep for that side? Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> Good guess. Good guess. Mm -hmm. You sound so confident, I thought you would know. I just, I just knew that they, I just knew you are that different. Yeah. there's a difference. It's, it's not just degrees either. Yeah, so we're talking about two different realities, actually. Yes, yeah, it's not just the same thing in degrees. So, image has to do with our nature. Which is we're body and soul. Anamorphic. Anamorphic. Um, yep. Yeah. But the ultimately it's that we have in the soul an intellect and a free will. <laughs> now, like God, we can know and we can love. The intellect lets us know things, and the free will lets us love. These are so. These are the the fact that the parts of us let us do these things. This is what we use them for. Intellect knows things. The free will loves things. We think of free will more as terms of choice, but free will ultimately is about love. So the love, the love, and this is what makes us be in God's image. That we are a reflection of God. We we are make God's images on this world because we are made in His life, and therefore we're persons. God is, there are three types of persons. There are divine persons, there are human persons, and there's also angelic persons. So there's three different groups that are persons, able to know, able to love, able to freely choose what's good, to work for it, to walk. That's God, that's image. Likeness And sanctifying us. Holiness. So you can be in God's image, but not like God. If you're like God, you're going to be in God's image. You can be in God's image and reject God. You can be in God's image and be in hell. You can't be like God and reject God. And so the likeness of God refers to this union with God, this, this, this friendship with God, this life with God. Which lets us walk with God, go to heaven, and be pleased with Him. So that's the part that's mostly broken after Adam and Eve. We still have the image, but we don't know We still have the image, but even it's the moment, though. The moment image. But we lost the likeness. It has to be restored in the sacrament of... Where we get, we get saved by grace the first time. But sacraments first, baptism. Yeah. yeah. So we see baptism, which restores the likeness. We lose it if we do what kind of sin? What's the big sin? More of the sin. Uh, we, we get it back. And what sacrament? If you have you're been baptized, if that's reconciliation, that's yeah. So this this is so this doesn't change. This is either one. This there's degrees. Is that what you were talking about on Sunday in the in the homily? Something about you know God's God's given us the God, God. It could have been in the readings too. God's given us the the power to become heirs, and if if heirs, then um, we're brothers of Jesus, and then God. Give me the sons and heirs. The sons and heirs. And, and, then, and then God can. Make us with the same ball. And then the likeness is God can recognize us. Or we're worthy to approach him because yeah. because we got cleaned up. Yeah, um, you could also say that this makes us sons as well. Uh, so this we're creatures of God. This, this is where we're sons of God. Okay. Okay. Um, so the, the sanctifying grace, which is a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Um, we'll look at this in a minute. But Adam and Eve were created in the image and likeness of God. They were created the sanctifying grace. So their sanctifying grace comes from God. Does it come from Jesus? Does that have any sanctifying grace come from Jesus Christ? Is that the cross? Yeah. Adam and Eve before the fall? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. So when Adam and Eve were created, it was Jesus. We had nothing to do with Jesus. 
Okay. After they fell, the grace to go after that was produced. I, I just thought because God was upset at times that from the foundation of the world, yeah. was, so all really, of these things were true. And it still encompasses even though even though like we God mm-hmm. revealed Jesus revealed them it, it, in the proper time or in the but but these things have always that's why I answered them correctly. Mm-hmm. I thought from the foundation of the world, these things that are always been decided, these these things that are always been. In God's plan. So the book of Romans. So they were a done deal. The book of Romans talks about there being a new Adam, a new beginning. And so Adam's role was to be the source of grace and life for every human being. In the book of Genesis chapter 5 talks about um, Adam giving to his sons and daughters the image of life, his own image of life. Right, the state of being, in this case, laughter of life to God and the image. Genesis chapter 5, where he talks about that. Because he was, a, as the head of the human race, his role was to pass on all the gifts and blessings that he's printed. I will look at that in a minute, we can read that in a bit. God created four different groups of blessings in the garden that Adam was to pass on to us, and he did it. Um, and so Adam was meant to be, to be this, the source of grace of the human race. Simply by being the children of Adam, we have God in grace, we have made God in life. They're the conceived without, without, without sin, they're the conceived in grace and life as well. When we, Adam fell, Adam did not pass on grace to us, kind of pass on life to us. And so God came for the new beginning and new start. And after the fall, every grace in the human race after the fall comes from Christ. Before the fall, a different source. That was the creation. After creation is ruined, all the grace that comes from Christ. So was it really from the Holy Spirit? Because he's the creator? It was not the Holy Spirit, sorry. Oh, what, what, what was the, before the fall was, was the grace from the Holy Spirit? It was, so they, they had the grace and the act of creation. So for us, there are stages, right? So for now we were created without grace, we do things we get grace. For them it was together. It would be like asking, where do you, where do you get your heartbeat and, and your body? Well, they go together. You know, it's not the same thing, but they happen at the same time. Your body and soul are created at the same moment. Um, the grace and the life were created at the same time. It was instantaneous. Instantaneous, yeah. Okay. So, so we have to do things. Adam and Eve simply work. They were created this way. God made them as long as their life was. And that's we made them. And that was his plan for us. So his plan was, I'm going to make Adam and Eve. I'm going to have them work in the garden. It'll be easy. So they're going to know me, they're going to walk with me, I'm going to tell them what to do. They're going to have all, the, all these great gifts. And then, after a number of years, they'll just go to heaven and they'll die. That was God's plan. And they'll pass on to their children the same state of existence. Just imagine that. Oh, they wouldn't have, oh, they wouldn't have to suffer death. No, no death. No, 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 no suffering death. No. No, no, no suffering. No weaknesses in, in, in the mind or the intellect, weaknesses in the soul, weaknesses or the feet. What would the point of even being alive be? Because the whole point of being alive is struggle, it seems Ooh. like. The point of being alive would have been to work with God in his creation. He'd be fulfilled. Yeah. He'd, he'd be super fulfilled. I guess we just can't imagine what that no. looks like. No. <laughs> <laughs> we can't fathom it. The point of life here on earth is to work with God. In the six days of creation, you'll work with God. And then in the end, to rest with God, to enjoy God. That was the point. To work with God in our own life, our own six days of creation. God very deliberately left the world to finish and said, Here, finish this for me. And by your choices, by your actions, by your words, or what you do, which other get to heaven, make yourself great, make the world around you good. But for them, it was easy work. They were told to kill the garden, keep the garden. Um, so all the difficulties we have now weren't there. At the end of that time, to enjoy God forever. Um, that was God's plan. It was what happened. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's always a. Freeze warning. <laughs> but it couldn't have been his plan because he knows everything. He knew we were going to screw it up from the start. Right. So. Right. It was. It was 
his blood. <laughs> remember, remember, remember that knowledge is not the same thing as wanting or causing. So I can know something about causing or wanting. Um, and for God, the ability to have a free will and intellect is worth the possibility of the rejection. Um, God did not plan, so I, I want Abby to fall, I want there to be sin, I want there to be suffering. God didn't want that. That's what allowed it to happen because of the fact that made us work with you. We could have chosen a different thing. Well, we, had, we put on our creation instead of suffering and death. That was our part. That was our contribution to it is his plan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't all that great. But that was our contribution. But, but, and so the Lord allowed it, but didn't shoot it or want it. And then he uses that to do so much even greater things. Coming of Christ, the union of, of between God and man, the deep and profound sense. Um, real briefly, now, let's look at this thing. It's like a free will. These are the two main areas which make us be persons. Thanks, Doug. The intellect is not the same thing as the brain. The brain is a tool used by the intellect. The intellect is a spiritual part of us that uses all the information. We gather information all kinds of things through our senses, through the sight. The brain puts it together. But the intellect is not the same thing as the brain. And we know this, we can prove this by the very fact that if you look at what we know and how we know, a physical thing, a material thing, will only know physical material things. A, a device that, that gets and gathers information will only get the information according to what that device is. So a, a video recorder is going to record video. A CD player or a CD recorder, audio recorder is not going to record video. If, I, if, I have, if, if I'm getting information, I'm playing something that's playing video, it has to be more than just an audio recorder. Right? I mean, so that makes sense so far? Yes. If we know things that aren't just material, physical reality. There's a part of us that's big, bigger and greater than the physical material world. The brain being physical can't record, can't store, can't grasp non-material physical things. So there must be a part of us that's not material and not physical. That's our soul. So looking at the kind of knowledge we have, we know there's a part of us that's spiritual. We have an intellect. The intellect and the brain are different things. The intellect uses the brain. The brain is a necessary part of us. Hopefully we use, hopefully use our brains. Um, but the intellect is more than that. The intellect, we can know spiritual reality, spiritual God himself, also the truth and justice, or things like they're abstract, things like numbers and mathematics. You know, in, the, in the physical world, there aren't circles. There are circular things. There aren't circles. There aren't geometric figures. There aren't numbers. There are numbers of things. But there are numbers. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And so, because we know those things, we know we have an intellect. It's very important. Um, free will is a spiritual part. In the same way that their brain is kind of related to our intellect, doing, but doing things on the physical side and the spiritual side, we have the emotions and we have the free will. The emotions are called appetites by a lot of early writers. Because we do the quotes, we desire to desire an appetite for cookies. I have an appetite for, you know, a mad some an appetite for poking someone in the nose. You know, these are appetites, the passion, there's desire. The free will is the appetite for the good. The desire for what's good. And in the end, what this means is that we desire what's truly good, what's best 
was the most, and we call this love. We, have, we, we desire the good of other people, we love other people. So I have the good for ourselves, we love ourselves. We desire the good of pizza, we love pizza. <laughs> Must be hungry, I don't know. Or were you an Ninja Turtle over there? One of the two. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> the will is what lets us choose freedom. Well, that says love. Because man can, can love in a chooseless way as a person, if he is free will. Um, intellect and free will, image likeness, or image of God, are found in the soul. And they make us persons. There's a very important piece to this as well, though. Because the intellect and the free will to know and to love can't end with just me. I have to know something. I have to love someone. These things point out where other people. First of all, the other that goes around us. But this means that the very, the very core of our being the very center of who we are is a desire to love and to be loved. The, the part of our hearts is the great desire of the human heart is to love and to be loved. And the scripture puts it in the second chapter of Genesis it is not good for the man to be alone because we're made of other people. First of all, God, and then for each other. Questions on this? Okay. Why did God make us? What was God's original plan? What was the purpose that God created us for? Didn't want love him and serve him? In this life, and we'll be happy with him forever in the next. Very good, thank you. <laughs> 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 Contact with the Baltimore Catechist, teaching seven year olds what sin is. So I was telling them on Sunday, okay, well, I don't. I don't love you like L-U-V, like I love pizza, like, ooh, I love pizza, ooh, I love that show, but I said, I want the best, and I want the, I want the best for you, that's why I love you, not, not I love you like, ooh, I just love you, and they were all giggling, but I was trying to get across what love is not L-U-V, my daughter's always telling me, love is a verb, mom, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> what do you think of that definition? Right, that no one will serve and have to no serve God in this life, happy forever in the next. What do you think of that definition? It's pity. It's pity. It makes God sound selfish. Uh, honestly, <laughs> my first word that was my thought. I think that's is, is God selfish? What do you think? Maybe he wasn't. Right, I'm sure you know he's not too. No, of course he's not. I don't know yet. We'll see, I guess. <laughs> 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 no, correct. If I was to come here and say, you know me, love me, and serve me. Well, <laughs> like mystics and stuff, and saints have described God as a jealous God. Um, yeah. They, they, but we have to put, the Testament a lot. We have yeah. to put human words on what, on, on yeah, someone who's infinite. Yeah. Yeah. They, we don't have the words. We don't have the words, but no. no, when the Old Testament says God is jealous, it's not talking about the sin of jealousy. What it's saying is God will not tolerate anyone anything ahead of them. A divided heart. A divided heart. Not tolerate or influence. Oh. <laughs> so you tolerate a lot, don't you? <laughs> so the thing is this. When God created us, he could have made us for any number of different things. He could have made us to eat, drink, and be merry. Lie in the sun, you know, eat baklava. <laughs> right, right? Why not? He could have the purpose of our existence. He said, that's not enough. He could have made you for people. 
You all have been here to know that serve me. I'm pretty great. <laughs> but God said even that had enough for you. When God says he made you for himself, what he's saying is there's nothing greater I can make you for. Anything other than me would have been less. Because God really and truly is the greatest of all possible things, for God to say, make you for myself, is I was saying, make you the greatest and the highest and the chief purpose. And in doing so, what God wants is for us to become as much like him as possible. He wants us to be as close to him, as great as we can, as holy as we can. He wants us to love him. To love him. He wants us to become great in ourselves. And the greater we are, the higher we are, the holier we are, that's how we please him. A king and emperor will say, make me a statue, make me a palace, make me a house. Make me. God says, make me a heart, like unto mine. That loves, that cares, that creates, that's willing to suffer and die to save others. That's what God wants. And so when God says you're made to know the love and serve saying you're made to know the grace of apostle mysteries, we want to know. Human beings, we want to know. Knowing, knowing is good. Learning is good. We love that's all that you're made to know the unending, unlimited, infinite, perfect love. Made to love as a branch by union, filial relationship, a deep, the by union which itself is life. We can like God, so we can live like God, and enjoy God's own goodness. And to serve not as a slave, but to work with God so we can say what happened in this world, this life, the Lord said, you have a real shower. And the Lord respects us so strongly that what you do in this life, the choices you make, the decisions you say, the words you say, will echo the whole eternity. You literally help God create the world. Adam and Eve made a choice, and they brought sin to the world forever. Without their choices, things won't exist. Certain things you have done in this world wouldn't it be here without your choice. But God still made them saints, right? God still acts through them. God is still the, still the creator. God is still the one doing everything. But God's given us a little shower. The closest analogy I can give, because in the end, all around is Lent, because we're talking about, about I mean, so far beyond us, is cooking with children. Who does a good cooking? Well, it's with the mom and dad. But the, but, the, but, the, but the kids go and imagine the ingredients out, they pour the stuff in, they're doing something. It's real. If they, if they add too much, a little bit of throwing salt rather than sugar, it looks like the recipe. <laughs> but who's directing, who's dying, who's helping them with that, who's giving them the ingredients? Well, it's mom. So yes, they, they, they made dinner that night, but while well, they did Like the parents giving the kids money to buy gifts for them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like when they're real little. Or making the, the president saying you're sign your name to it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So this this is why he made us. Is we're made to be with God forever in heaven for eternity. Have this this life with God. Because the deepest desire of the human heart is to, is to love and to be loved. That makes sense, to people. What it is, okay. That's the, deepest, that's the deepest desire of our heart. This is why heaven is not the clouds and the angels. Heaven is a relationship. Heaven is a deep friendship, this deep union with somebody that we can be with for eternity. That's God. And we go there unashamed because we've been purified and perfected. And we go there enjoying him and he goes there loving us and caring for us. And we see the joy of us and love for us and we, see, we love him and are with him. And we're those we love. But people as well. That's what happens. You know, we have a glimpse of it. We can have a conversation with someone we really care about and in an hour it takes time to do the events. And so eternity in heaven will, will take no time at all, take all the time in the world. <laughs> we'll never end. But it's not like here or earth, you have to do the same thing over and over again, over again, get bored. That's why 
I always thought heaven would be boring. <laughs> because we get, I feel like we work so hard to learn all this crap here on earth, and then we die and we don't take our objects with us. So we can't play our instruments or read our books. But we get to fly. Do any of the you get stuff to, that we learned how to fly. do. You get to fly all over the You universe. get to fly without fear. I'm afraid of heights. I'm like, I want to fly. I'm scared. I'm the one that has to fix the air conditioner on the roof. I'm just going to blow up there. Don't worry, in heaven you'll have to do it. Yeah, will it be a perfect 72 degrees all the time? But then you get to praise God constantly. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess nothing and, that and we you do don't, here will matter afterwards. Right? I don't think you get so tired of it. Matter. No. Well, Honestly, on the contrary, everything will matter. It won't matter for its own sake. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, not to yeah. appease us, as it were. Yeah. But everything we did here is not going to be lost. It, it'll be perfected and known and recognized. Christ in heaven bears the marks of the nails on his hands and his feet beside. That's scary because then it makes you feel like you're never going to ever do enough to make it matter. But you get to just be your, you can just be yourself and, and he loves you unconditionally. So he does it here, but I guess he would do it to a greater degree. In greater heaven. degree there and through sanctifying grace, purgatory would either. You become worthy of it. The whole point is not simply that. God's pretending we're worthy and saying, well, you're not really God makes us worthy. So that we are able to stand before without shame, without God saying, I'm not worthy to be this. I mean, you are worthy in some way because it's a pure gift. But you come to a place where through your own help and efforts as well, through your own free choices, through your own work, and through God's grace and merit gifts, it's, it's both and where you be able to stand before, before God without shame, without fear. Be able to rejoice with God. You'd be able to say all the things I did, even if they were tiny, the widow's mind had a great effect in eternity. And, and, and the person who comes forward and, and gives the penny and says, Well, I, I brought you, not to be less welcomed or be ashamed for the person who brings forward, you know, the thousand pounds of gold. Because in the end, talk about God, right? I mean, if, if the, the, the view of God, you know, if you had a bunch of ants coming to you, one brought to you, you know, a little tiny rock and brought to you a grain of sand, both are kind of worthless to you. <laughs> but in God's eyes, because of the one bringing them, they become more to worthy. I didn't think you could get bored in heaven. No. It's, I mean, it, God is so omnipotent. I mean, you just want to be with him and do what he wants and serve him. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so it, it, it's the perfect eternal enjoyment and happiness yeah. because of relationship with love. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. God made us to be happy, right? We just say that way of making you to be happy with him forever and the next. We have to be careful, right? Because we hear people say that, I'll say, therefore, I can do whatever I want to do. And I can, you know, go and steal and shoot and lie to make me happy. No, 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 that. You have to be happy. You have to be happy doing good. Yeah, well, in the end, when we, when we do evil, we're not really happy. Uh, we can be, might enjoy it for, for a time, for a time, maybe we need 10 years, 15 years. We might enjoy the pleasure we get. But in the end, you talk to people who, who live that way, who do those things, they're miserable. Mm -hmm. People who live lives of morality, who, who steal, who lie and cheat, who kill, they're not happy. They might be enjoying certain things. They might enjoy fine dining or wealth. They're not happy. And you, you, I mean, they'll tell you they are at first. You sit down and talk to them and truly talk to them and they open up. They will tell you, I don't understand this. It makes no sense to me. This is miserable. This isn't worth it. But yes, we're made to be happy again. And you're made to glorify God by your happiness. We glorify God in ourselves and by who we are. Yes, we glorify God in what we do, what we make, and the things we do. But first of all, it's who you are. You glorify God, you, you make him happy because of who you are. The first work is the work in your soul. 
The greatest work is the work in your soul. So yes, yeah, maybe you never wrote that great, you know, best-selling novel. Maybe you never, you know, built the cathedral for him. But if you build the cathedral in your soul, that's what he wants. That's what he asks because he cares about you personally. Because we are body and soul, we have a unique place in creation. God is pure spirit. God has a body. Christ talked into a human form in a body. But God is not by nature, has no physical body. The angels have no body. And so God made us to be this bridge between the physical creation and the spiritual creation. That our role was to be, in a certain sense, the priests of the physical world. Take creation, take the physical world around us, offer it to God, glorify God, and do good those around us. And this role is what we have today. We're meant to take the world around us, to elevate it, to sanctify it, to purify it, to work the garden, as it says in the scriptures. Right, this church is a physical building. It's, I don't know if it's right now. Play and you know, paper and wood and all the things. But by itself, it's not going to do that. We used to be able to go ahead and do the work and we can find the wood for the floor and find the fiber for the cloth, the, the rug, and find the, the paint for the different images of it. By doing so, then we glorify God because the way the creation won't do by itself. We have this role to be the priest, the bridge between God and the rest of creation. And so Adam and Eve are made by this that have God in the garden to do this, to make all the sacrifice. Good so far? Make sense? Questions? Let's look at then the original state of man in the garden. God's original plan. So God created Adam and Eve with three main groups of gifts. A natural, a preternatural, and a supernatural. The natural gifts into the body and soul, intellect and free will. <coughs> The emotions include, include the uh, um, every all other things. And so Adam was able to rejoice in the world around him, his intellect, to see it in an intellectual way, to rejoice in knowledge, and also emotional. Yeah. Good things. In the Garden of Eden, the universe. The stars, the sun, plants, the animals, all those things are given to Adam. Preternatural gifts, we're going to use them a lot. Preternatural means something that is beyond the ordinary nature, but that elevates and perfects, doesn't change the nature. So, a dumb example, like a, the best example I can come up with, where if I were to take a Dixie cup and coat it with jewels, it would still be a Dixie cup. <laughs> it, would be, it would be the most expensive Dixie cup in the world. Be dazzled. Be dazzled, yeah. Or if you should be seeing something, you get some of the you'll see like the, the, the pop scenes will get like the CD player, the diamonds, or, you know, it's still a CD player. But it's been bedazzled, it's been elevated, it's been enriched. So, preternatural gifts are enriching gifts that don't change what we are. And there are five, um, or there's five, at least five, there are big ones. These are the gifts of integrity, first of all. Integrity doesn't mean honesty. Integrity means wholeness. To think, think of the, 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 what's a whole number in that? It's an integer. That's right. So what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's why Daniel's the math. Daniel. He's better at it than I am. I thought you were the math. Okay. <laughs> but I know 
But in Egypt, there's a hole, right? You remember that? Or middle school? No. No. I'm too old. <laughs> it's so long ago. Anyway. It's like the basic. Hole number, it's a hole. No, I know. It's a hole. <laughs> it doesn't help you remember the dark, doesn't ignore it. <laughs> what it means in this sense is they were created, there wasn't a word, you know, with us, there's a word in our body that so. We want things that aren't good for us. I want that eighth piece of chocolate cake. I want to go to bed at the time. I want to stay up late and do it. You know, we want things. Emotions that aren't good for us. I know they're not good for me, but I want them anyway. There is a struggle between us. Different parts, there's a struggle between different parts of it. You know, so I'm given an exam, you know, there's this, this struggle where I, where I want to cheat on. You know, you may not do it, because you're good. There's a part of the one still, especially the teacher made it very easy. You have to answer here on this. Oh, you smell, you smell dessert cooking in the oven. You went, no, I blew dessert. I want to eat dinner today. That's what dessert. <laughs> Adam and Eve were whole. There was not that struggle between them. And more than that, the emotions that they had were so perfectly under the control of their free will, they could decide to stop feeling certain things. For us, our emotions are mostly a response. The most they respond, sometimes you don't respond well. For Adam and Eve, it was both a response and also something they could decide at first. They could say, you know what, it'd be good if I were to, you know, be kind and patient to my, to my spouse. So I'm going to love them emotionally, be excited to see them. I want, I'm going to be excited to see them. And they could choose to be excited to see their spouse. Rather than like, act to be excited, not for the feelings. <laughs> but they could actually choose that, desire that, and feel it. Because the same thing the, the, the we have over our hands and our legs and our feet, and over their emotions and over their body. Is that anything? I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. You go ahead. I was going to say, no wonder why they sin. Because that sounds like it would be really boring to just <laughs> turn off all your problems. <laughs> like, me to be able to choose. Yeah, that would like. Totally change your whole life. <laughs> so, so they weren't tempted? They weren't tempted from the inside. Okay. So okay. remember, there's, there's three sports of temptation. All the flesh and the devil. They were tempted by the devil, then, I guess? The devil and also by the world, right? So they, you, you they, have to each other. They weren't tempted by their own flesh. They weren't tempted by their own flesh. They had two sports of temptation, we have three. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, they're like the devil made me do it, but it's really, it's really the flesh. And uh, really, it's often the will too. Yeah. <laughs> you say you say the flesh, but it's often the will. It's the flesh tempts, but the will chooses. Yeah. But they had integrity. They had infused knowledge. There were certain things they knew when they were afraid. We see this at the end of the animals and the thing like that. Um, they had immortality. <clears throat> so the possibility to not die. It wasn't that it was impossible to die completely, but they, they were, the impossible was not die. An impassibility, which meant they weren't, they weren't clumsy, they weren't um, they were graceful, they were intelligent, they were at foresight, they weren't like they were bang their shins against, against the, the stones or, or fall down, and break their ankle, or, you know, pet that poison snake and be killed by it. Um, so that they had grace, beauty, and, and all these things that would make things easy to, to do as well. And then they had happiness, infused happiness. Supernatural, let me stop there. Question on that? Let me remind this kind of quickly. But. They had it all. Had it all. <laughs> <laughs> had it good. End of story, right? <laughs> had it good. Yeah. Okay. Supernatural, they had sanctifying grace, which made them the son of God, and then pleasing to God, and the work of God, and the heaven. They had the infused virtues. The gifts of the Holy Spirit.
They were told by God, you got to till the garden, care of the garden, and it's going to be easy for you. Because guess what? Being, a, being working with God and under God, they had control over creation. The animals and plants were under their authority. They could tell the rain to fall from 3 to 5 to 3 to 3 on 10. <laughs> and that was kind of a picnic. You know, it's not like this one degrees. The animals aren't going to attack me. They might eat each other, but they're not going to attack me. That's so <laughs> um, And this was their job, was to till the garden. They'd make the garden beautiful. Care. But they were the lords of the garden. Lords of creation. And these gifts set up what are called the four harmonies. I need a secretary to come along and write for me. <laughs> like Fulton Sheen's angel? You only erase stuff. She, she, she has a good handwriting. I have a good handwriting. Like a word. Your writing is better than That's because you like a doctor, Father. You have to have bad handwriting. Yeah. We have to write fast, talk fast. <laughs> yeah. So the four harmonies were between God and man. He's saying divine grace and God's friendship and God's love. Between man and self, there wasn't a war in his own heart. There wasn't the self doubt. There wasn't the self hatred. There wasn't no he struggled. The man and each other. Not, not, there was, there was no selfishness, no pride, no greed, no, no lust, no anger, no. So they belong together. They kind of care for each other. They love each other for God's sake. We need man and nature. These are the four harmonies set by God in the fall. The God, 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 for the fall. Thanks to these three groups of gifts. That was God's plan. Well, this also led to the divine love, of course. They were friends of God, they walked with God. God spoke to them, even in the garden. Well, you see this in the, in the, in the, in the garden. So what happened? Wow, happened. And then fell apart. <laughs> I read the story, the devil comes along, the guy has a serpent, says to Eve, we back up. So God, God says, don't, don't eat of this tree. Why would God make a tree not to eat of it? To test us? <laughs> Just God being mean, testing you? <laughs> <laughs> I almost said this. He was sparing them, right? He was sparing them. Well, the God was yeah, why was it there in the first place? Yeah. It was there because it was for them and not yet. For them and not what? It was for them and not yet. Okay, but not yet. It was something you wanted to have. It would have been good if it happened in the right way, but not the way they had it and the way they did it. Uh, it would have helped them, though, because it would have helped them, it would have decreased something. But they did it their own way, their own plans. Right, I mean, it's like the old saying, you know, knives don't kill people, another kill people, people kill people. Yeah. It's not that those tools are bad, but they can use them in bad ways. Right. Um, and so God and the tree there, and so this is for, it's for you, but not yet, not for you yet. So wait, you're, you're, you're I want, I want you to prove to me that you're willing to follow me. Don't have this, don't have, remember that was easy. The devil comes along and he says, God's a liar. He knows if you eat this, you'll, you'll, you'll be powerful. You'll, you'll, be like, you'll be like him. So eat it, and you'll be happy. Can I ask a dumb question? Is there some significance in the devil of being shown as a snake? Well, I know that sounds like obvious, but is there some like deep meaning to that? As opposed, as opposed to like a, a wolf or something? Or another man. Anything, yeah. Anything. Or another man, or... So, what I think it is, so this is my opinion to take it with plus right. all What I think it is, it's showing the degradation of what happened to Lucifer. Where he was credited as a great male being. Mm -hmm. 
He's more powerful, more glorious, more, more beautiful. Um, the extent where you look at the scriptures, when people see angels, when people see souls that are sanctified, it confuse them for God. Even the St. John of Revelation falls down to the angel taking his cup. And he insists on Noah, my God, in his name. I think what we're seeing here is how far he's fallen. Where he's gone from being this angelic being. At the top. At the, the very top. At the, the highest top. heaven. And now he's, he's crawly, creepy, crawly, scaly, ugly thing. Poisonous. With the ability to kill. With the ability to mm-hmm. death. It's father of lies. Symbol of death. It's symbol of death, father of lies. Um, but I think it's given this contrast between what he was and what he became. Um, but at least a, a, a way of, of saying that without talking about it as an essay. You know, he's, he's a discerning. He's a sly, lying SOB. The Bible is not a fire. Or just a politician. <laughs> it's whatever in politics without the government. Without the ball. Um, so, yeah, so then we filled it out. Of the tree, yeah, it's a it, 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 tree. Why would they do that? <laughs> why do you? I mean, they why had not? everything. Why would they want to be like God if they loved God the way they were supposed to love him? Because, like the devil, they wanted the gifts of God without being dependent upon God. Uh, they wanted to be able to say, uh, This came from me by myself. Uh, Ah, uh, okay. But right, God, that tree was for them. When everything the devil tells them, they already have. They'll be like God, they'll be happy, you'll know things, you'll, they have all that. Right. But they wanted that not from God, from, from themselves. themselves. Okay. The temptation wasn't simply, you'll have these beautiful things, you'll have them, it's that you'll have them, you'll have them for yourself. They still were like a step below the ultimate place to be then because they weren't fulfilled or they wouldn't have done that. They right. were still not with God. Correct. They, they were not being vision. Yeah. Yeah. So they, so still, they, they were in this state here, state of working with God. Yeah. There was still you know, 70, 80 years of work, perfection, of choosing, um, raising children before they're, they're happy. Yes, absolutely. Um, you should you somebody use the same term we have in paradise, this garden paradise. But no, I mean the paradise comparison, but not in reality. Yeah, the, uh, the secular world treats the Garden of Eden like it is heaven when it wasn't. It was step below step. Step below step. Yeah. It was work, it was easy work. Still work. Um, there's still a choice. That's why they were crushed. Um, but why did God let this happen. Why did God let them choose happens? He's never, he's never going to override our free will. And, and why not? People just don't get that. He's never going to. Why not? Because if you didn't come to him and love him because you wanted to, what's the point? So free will lets you do what? Love perfectly. Love. Free will. Love. Choose love. Right? Without free will, there is no love. There's no friendship. God doesn't want slaves, one of the puppets. He wants children and friends. If I came to you with a shotgun and said, who's my friend today? You might tell me, yeah, I'm your friend, I'm your best friend. That's not true. If I came and forced you to do whatever I wanted you to do, you might tell me, oh, I love you, you're my best friend, I can go take care. not true. If they drag me to hang out, I'm going to your neck and drag you around everywhere I go and hang out. <laughs> you, know? you might tell me, oh, this, this is great, you're going to go away. <laughs> It's not going to be true. Right. I know. Gonna... This table will never obey any of God's will, any of, any of God's commands. This table will always obey God's command for what can it do? It can't be God's friend, it can't be God's child. And so, had God said to us, you don't have, you don't have the choice to do these things, we would have lost the ability to be his friends with children. And so, God gave us this choice. Because he wants us to be his friend and his children. Even after we fall, that's still a possibility. That still takes place. That takes place in Christ. That still takes place.
Why was this sin so serious? He's a fruit. What's the big deal? Right? If I had a piece of fruit of your tree, you don't you need to know it me <laughs> while you're trespassing. You're not going to try to destroy it. Because they disobeyed him. I mean, it's a physical to see a fruit, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, he, he, I think his parents recognize the difference between, between like, different, different things, right? I mean, so if you told, if you told your, your daughter not to have candy for dinner, you had this candy dinner, that's going to annoy you. It's not going to be the same thing as you know, her fed out on fire. Since you use the word rebellion, it turns you into the devil, right? It, it, it puts you on par with the devil because that's what he did. He said, I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't like your plan the way it is, I'm going to do my own plan. Yeah, so what it was, was basically it was, it was a distrust of God. It was calling God a liar. It was trusting a creature more than God. And it was doing so fully, freely, understanding what was going on. It wasn't that they were overwhelmed with the desire for this piece of fruit. It's like, I can't help myself. Oh, no, I didn't mean it. It was. God can forgive that. It was. I know it's bad. Yeah. It, it wasn't. It's, I, know, it wasn't I, I know better. It was, I know better. And more than that, you're a liar. He's not. Right. You're trying to screw me over. I know better. I'm doing it my way. And, and so it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't just simply an act of eating the fruit. Was deliberate one rejection of God as Father. I think it still would have happened even without the snake. They still would have eventually. Eventually, they got to get up on their own self esteem. My, no, there's, there's, there's one of those things we don't know. Well, all I was they weren't in the garden very long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. But we don't know how long they were there. But yes, yeah, no. Sure. And then no. the. No, when they got wounded out, like it's physically, it's a mess. you know, like wasn't there two angels there and like burning spears and it was like it was like it's like, it like a little electrified fence, like get out, get out and stay out. It was a real. We destroyed that. Really? Yeah. The cherub, yeah. Burning swords, yeah. Could we ever pay God back by ourselves? Would we ever say, no, we're really sorry, no. let's give, why not? We can now by choosing Jesus, because Jesus does it. Jesus can do it, yeah. but we can do it by ourselves. That's just sin against an infinite good. So the, the greatest the one offended, there was another reason to. So good, good, you're right, you're right. There's no to add to that. So, Dan, if I were to borrow $20 from you, did I borrow twenty more dollars to pay you back? <laughs> I would say you don't have to pay me back because I'd never see it. <laughs> and that's how I tell my kids when they needed money, yes. like some big money. I said, don't take it away from the grandkids. Give it to the grandchildren when you need it. Same one to the other daughter. Because <laughs> I would never see that money back anyway. <laughs> but let's say you were a bank. Could I borrow twenty dollars from you and then borrow twenty more to pay you back? No. <laughs> Why not? Because it don't work that way. I haven't paid you back anything, right? Right. And so since God made everything and owns everything, you can't take what all it belongs to God to pay God back. So because God's the creator, we can't take from God's creation to pay him back. He would have given us anything and right. everything. Like everything I have is yours, like the prodigal son, everything I have is yours. But you got mad because you didn't get it the party with your friends when you wanted it and you were that's why you were jealous of your brother i, I mean i mean i probably am saying that wrong but you didn't get it the way you wanted it when you wanted it and how you wanted it and that you're thinking it came you know like i've got this coming to me you owe me yeah, so that was the rebellion part, but then you can't, you can't repay it, you can't fix it by yourself, because God already owes it. So I, I can't take, if I owe you something, I can take what's already yours to pay you back. Jesus can do it because he's God, he comes to bring something new to the world. We can't do that. What happened to Adam and Eve because of this? Well, they lost the supernatural gifts. Those were gone. Lost the of God, lost the grace of God, lost the virtues. They lost paramount. <laughs> Into 
lack of his darker. It's hard to know the right thing. The will was weak. They lost the integrity. They lost a few champions. Now they can get sick and they die. Let me pause there for a minute. The Lord, at the, at the, at the end of the story, somebody from the garden, less the eat of, of the tree of, of immortality. There's two trees in the garden. Immortality and all do we Why does the Lord say, I don't want them to eat of the tree of immortality? Because the Lord is not stuck in that stage. If we would live forever here, apart from God, rejecting our values against God, immortal, there's no hope for us. Is that the tree that they describe in Revelations now? So it gets replaced by Christ. Christ becomes the new tree of, of life. Um, because life gives us eternal life of heaven. But the tree of life here on earth would have kept us alive without, without death. Um, but because we were now as sin and, 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 and brokenness and, and suffering and sorrow, the Lord says, let there be an end to it. It's a mercy. So death allows it to be an end so that there can be a new beginning and, and resurrection. Without death, there's no resurrection. And so the Lord, by taking it out of the garden, is being mean and saying, well, ha ha, you're going to get to have this. The Lord's saying, let there be an end. There's going to be a limit to your suffering, a limit, limit to misery. This is an act of great mercy. Now it's caused by our, you know, our, our sin. But the Lord, in his part, is doing it as a, as a limit. The wickedness we can do. The, the, the sorrow we can feel. The suffering we can have. He says, 80 years old. His limits. We lose the garden. And now we now this gets gets rid of it too. It's body and soul are set or the world each other, they're weak in the dark and everything. I'm waiting for you to stack up and fall back and go to bed. She's trip me over it. She's ready to pick you up on it. Speaking of original sin. <laughs> You're taking this as a show. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's also showing a lack of integrity and a lack of passivity. Yeah. So, okay. because God, Mamma, is God, this harmony is broken. Because of that, then, losing that grace, that union with God, that gets destroyed. Now that we're in ourselves. Because we're in ourselves, we're in each other. When creation rebels against us, we rebel in a war against God. How many will be destroyed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. And I always think, like, why did you do that? Why did you do that? And then I think, if I was in that garden, I would have done it. You know, I think it would be interesting to uh, convinced them to eat the, from the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life. We read this here where I, I just always thought it's interesting where God says, and I'm wondering exactly who he's referring to when he says, The Lord God says, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing what is good and what is bad. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand and take to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat of it and live forever. Well, if you look, both of them were only one was forbidden at that point. Right. Other three they could have eaten. They didn't eat it, they could have. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But the tree of all the people was forbidden, it wasn't for them yet. It wasn't for them yet. So they, they, that, that was forbidden. And point. that was the one that was forbidden, and that right. was the one that they were yeah. tempted to eat from. Because it was forbidden. Yeah. But believe me, I was told not. That's not who I am. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it says to us that there's two interpretations. One is talking about the angels, talking about the angels. The other is this is the royal, was the trying us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So uh, man come like us, meaning the Trinity. <coughs> but it could also mean the angels. Mm -hmm. So sin does. So now that we're created now, we were really created with all these things, we've had all this. I've been created, Adam and Eve's into likeness, we've created this one. 
We're missing, we're missing, we're, we're, we're missing this, this grace we need. And so we come to existence owing God everything, and being able to give him anything. We come to existence at war with God, war with ourselves, war with each other, war with nature. Just as well. Why are we punished for what Adam and Eve did? Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good idea. Oh. I don't know. I'm a sister. I always got punished for all the <laughs> Both of us got spots. Both of us got grounded. We're the descendants. Uh, We're the descendants. Yeah. Well, we have this imperfection on us, too, that's carried forward. We, yeah, the, and the inherent sinfulness. Yes, yeah, so what happens because of the fact we inherit the baby they gave. They didn't pass it down. This, this was this was this was part of the work they were called to do. They didn't do it. It's like the spiritual DNA. We got their we got their spiritual DNA. <laughs> we don't. It, it, it goes back to the recipe, right? Where, where, where the recipe that God called for it had no death in it, no suffering. Mm-hmm. And Adam and Eve had suffering and death in the recipe. And God went, "Well, that's interesting. Okay, I'll work with it." But that's what we, that's what we inherit. That's what we get. Because we don't have sanctifying grace anymore. I mean, to lose that because of the fact that Adam and Eve meant to work with God. We're meant to work with God. This is a great key to understanding who we are, what we are. But the Lord uses this stuff. The reason why it's not unfair of God, we'll use this to bring up about a greater God. The Lord says, because the struggle is greater, the reward will be greater. Because the effort is necessary, needed is more. I'm really closer to my son. We're closer now to God than, than Adam and Eve were. There was no, there was no holy communion for Adam and Eve. There was no confession for Adam and Eve. There was no. You know, we have all this. We have the mass. We have the sacraments. We have the Eucharist. We have yeah. the adoration. They couldn't just say, "Oops, I'm sorry." Right. Like, nope. They weren't sorry. An option. They weren't sorry. Like, yeah. They were sorry. <laughs> After they got kicked out. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, of course, tradition, they're considered canonized sex. So, so they were forgiven them in the end. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, no, I mean, they, they uh, December 24th of Easter. Uh, but yes, you know what I mean? But they could go to confession. They could, could they have a guarantee of forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And they saw a lot of suffering in their life. Mm-hmm. They saw that one of their children were another one of their children. They saw all kinds of horrible things happen. And they knew it was all their fault. Um, but we have Jesus Christ, we have the sacraments, we have the church, we have the mass, and we have a, a higher place in heaven than they would have been. The Lord uses that even the punishments, even the suffering, even the death, the, even the weaknesses to bring us back to himself in the world of lives. But Adam and Eve put about suffering and death in the world. How does Christ save us the most of us? Suffering and death. Adam and Eve a, you know, listen to, to, a, to a fallen angel. The new Eve Mary listens to a good angel to bring about the incarnation. Adam and Eve said, no, no to God, reject God, and trust him. Mary and Jesus trust God, say yes to God, and so save the world. The deeper you know, the deeper, the deeper friendship, the deeper closeness to God now. And even the punishments are used by God to bring about salvation, to bring about healing. It's not that God comes and says to us, there, there, I'm over. Don't worry about it anymore. The Lord says, your suffering, your tears, they're all counted. You give them to me, I will use them for your glory in heaven. In the same way that his cross is how it gets to heaven. His cross, his suffering, his death, is what gives him glory in heaven. Our tears, our suffering, our pain becomes part of our crown and glory in heaven. Isn't it? God oh, uses that. Oh, right. happy fault. <laughs> oh, happy fault. One last point, and then you'll end. It's going to be a little late. I keep talking, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. When does God first promise a redeemer? Genesis 3.15. 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 Genesis 3.15.
So this is the very beginning, it's right in the fall. That's 315, as he says, the serpent, I'll put a war of amity between you and the woman. When you're a seed of hers, you know, he will strike it. You will strike his head, his heel. He will strike, he will strike at your head, touch your head, he will strike at your heel. It's the promise of Satan. If you look at it closely with the rest of the, the, the verses, you'll see that actually the punishment where God says they're going to die, they're going to suffer, you're going to work in the garden, it's going to be hard work to live, happens after he promises to save. First he promises to save, and then he says, by the way guys, this is what you did. There's not going to be suffering and death and work and effort. Can I ask really quick, yes. I get the strike at your heel part, because Mary is going to crush the head of the serpent. I, she will strike at your head. What is that? Strike at your heel. Oh, okay. He will strike at your heel. Uh, oh, the, he sun, strike at the, the sun will strike at the head of the serpent, across the serpent's power. Yeah. He will strike at his heel. She will kill the humanity of Christ. Okay. You're going you're gonna, to not be able to defeat him. It is the lowest part of him. Uh, but you will strike him. You will, you will hit him. Mm -hmm. This is who's victory. Mm -hmm. But by the resurrection, he will cross the head, sir. Right. So if you look at the passage, he actually, the promise of the Savior happens before he tells us what we're going to do. Before he says you're going to suffer, you're going to work, you're going to sweat, you're going to die. He says you're going to be saved. And this means what he's promising, really, he's saying, I'm going to share these things. We, we know the Savior's Christ, other than that. What he's saying is, yes, the story of this is going to be born. I'm going to bear those stories on this. The crown of thorns. The rebellion against the, the earth. The earth is Adam. Right? Adam is made from the earth. He says, the earth will rebel against you. What he's saying is, you will rebel against me. If my son Jesus Christ. He talks about the suffering and childbearing. That's married through the cross. He's promising a savior in the midst of and before he tells us what we did. Which is incredible. Is what, we do. what he's saying is that all the stuff that we Adam messed up, we messed up, Christ will kill. Christ will be the great bridge between God and man, the great bridge between creation and everything else. Christ restores sanctifying grace, restores the virtues. These are the way to heaven. We'll get those back in heaven. After there is an ending and a renewal and a resurrection, then all this goes back in, in great to Christ. So created, fallen, redeemed through love. Why is God so good to us? <laughs> We're so naughty, <laughs> and he's so good to us. Because he's so good. I, I don't know why it's so hard to get how much he loves us. I, I can't, yeah, I can't grasp it. I can't, I, I can't ever get there. I think part of it's original son. Yeah. I think part of it's what we love ourselves, the right way. Yeah. But, but yes. It is. It is incredible. It is. Questions, comments? It's five twenty. Let's close the prayer, and we'll go see you at mass. Okay. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to get this conversation again. Help us to recognize you've done for us, how you love us. Let us, let us walk you always throughout our lives. All that we say and do be for your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So next week we'll start the very top of splendor, the splendor of truth in our whole session.